Today I'll be photographing Abba Glaslin, or the River Glaslin. And as you can see behind me, it's a really beautiful little river. And it flows through Bethgella, up of behind you now. And at the moment it's very calm, but as you go down through the Abba Glaslin Pass, it becomes more of a torrent. And there's a lot of waterfalls, so that's what I'll be photographing today. I wanted to get a nice sunrise today, but it's very cloudy and this is probably the only day um, of the week that we've got here that's forecast where it isn't going to rain. I'm not going to get a sunrise, so instead I thought I'd come down here and get some photographs of some waterfalls and this beautiful river because you don't necessarily need bright light, especially if you've got lots of trees and shadows and things like that, because that's going to add too much contrast to your photograph. So. On quite a dull day like today, this will be ideal for photographing waterfalls. Safety. We're getting a lot closer to the Aberglasen Falls now, so the water is going a lot quicker, and I've spotted my first photograph. There is a beautiful beach right behind me. That is turning the colours now. It's a bit early. I'm not expecting that to go really for about another four weeks. And a lot of the other beaches haven't turned yet. So I'm going to get a lovely photograph here. I think with this beach in the background, the water flowing towards us. We've got a, a bit of a waterfall there and a few rocks here. So I'm going to put that as some foreground interest and have the tree in the background is my middle distance or background um, interest. I've got some of these rocks here in the foreground and I decided to cut off the sky and just have that tree right on the top because the sky is very white and it wasn't adding anything to the photograph. So unfortunately I cut a tiny bit of the colour out of the top of the tree but I don't think that matters because the majority of it is in the photograph and this photograph really is more about colours and form. So from the colours point of view, we've got the beautiful colour of the, the beach in the background and using a polarising filter, fully polarised, that gave me completely clear water so I could see right through. I've got some lovely reflections of the beach in the water but also I can see underneath the water and there's some really lovely rocks there's some golden colours and some lovely blues and things like that. So there's some nice vibrant colours in this image. But also, as you can see, the difference between the water at the back of this scene, or rather the mid-ground, and the foreground. 
where the rocks are going cutting across at the thirds you basically get two different images so the bottom half is completely blurred and just white water and the back part is just lovely smooth clear water so those rocks are just breaking the water and I think it's a nice little pattern between the two contrasts of water and the bit that I focused in on was there's a couple of rocks and the bit of smooth bit in between so you can see a nice transition between the smooth water and going into this nice white water. So we're just about to go into the rapid water and this is pretty much the top of the falls and what I really liked about this is that little island in the background and the water goes either side of it so what I wanted to try and capture was a nice um, panorama with the flowing water because there's lots of white lines from this white water and just try and get a capture a nice photograph to show the movement of the water around that island but there's a little bit of colour on there um, in some of the beaches but the, the clouds above are very white so what I'm going to do is just crop that out of the top crop some of the bottom off and just have quite a thin panorama just to really show the movement of the water around the island So this is more like it. The gorge is just starting here. You can see the water is getting a lot more excited. There's a lot of rocks around here. And you can see the mountains around have been cut through into this lovely gorge by the river here. So there should be lots of photo opportunities around here. I have been here before. So I scouted this location and we've had a lot of water over the last few days so this water really is high and when I came before there's a rock there and a few rocks around here that are all submerged which weren't before but unfortunately because of this heavy rain I'm not able to get out into the river as much as I want to which is not a problem because I've got a previous photograph but what I'm going to do now is just walk around this area, take my time, not have the camera on the tripod and just relax and settle into the environment and then look around for some lovely photographs. I've moved along the pass a bit more now, so this river is cut in a really deep gorge and we've got this beautiful rowan tree, a nice larch and behind me over this side there's some really lovely um, weathered Scots pines and all around we've got this, this lovely heather and I really do think this is probably the best view along this pass. So what I'm going to do is take a photograph from up there. There's a little patch of blue sky behind you so I'm really hoping that there's going to be some sort of light hitting those trees in the background so it's not too flat an image. But either way I think the water will flow along it being very white water that will add some some depth and contrast to the image so as it meanders through the image you can see it's not two-dimensional so that will give you the three-dimensional effect
found this lovely composition just down there there's some really lovely rocks with the water flowing over them and there's some beautiful patterns in the water but unfortunately the sky above is so grey at the moment um, it really does look flat and lacklustre so I've focused right in on this on these rocks and trying to get the the movement of the water um, I think I took it about two seconds something like that to give nice flowing movement to the water but I've bracketed the exposure because I can't use a neutral density graduated filter over the sky to darken it down because over in the distance there's a big V shape in the valley so the neutral density filter or graduated would go over the top of both of those hills either side and would darken them too much so what I've done in this case I've I've done a bracket exposure and it's very bright in the sky so I've taken three photographs one um, with the correct exposure and then the other two one stop under and then another stop under just to try and get some detail in the clouds and if I can I'm going to try and make it as dramatic as I can to try and just add some drama to it because at the moment it's just so flat another thing that I've done just to show you the difference in speed of shutter speed, I've taken a photograph right at the, the foreground, close at rocks. I've taken two photographs, one at f4.5 and I think another one at f18. And that gave me two different exposures. One was really quick, I think it was about a tenth of a second, and the other was a few seconds. So when you're photographing water, it really is important to try and think about what sort of speed you want the water to be flowing at when you take the photograph so you can see the shorter exposure I think doesn't work because it's just it captures the water too crisply whereas the second photograph it adds a lot more motion blur and I think that looks a lot more visually appealing I'll quickly talk you through the photograph I've just taken because it's extremely loud down there, the water is really <laughs> noisy, so you might not be able to hear me. So I've come up the bank a bit, but the composition I did with the vertical, having those rocks in the foreground down there, with all the water rushing over them, and then the water leads its way through, and there's a nice old stone building in the background. So I've got that up on the top left, and we've got all this greenery around. Now because of the frothiness of this water, it's so white, I've had to take four different exposures and I'm gonna combine those together in Lightroom possibly or Photoshop to try and get the correct exposure because the highlights are being burnt out in this white water down here. But to expose for those correctly, there's absolutely no detail in anything else. So I've overexposed by another probably two thirds each time, just so I can get some shadow detail in the trees and get a bit more colour in those. Now today has been quite quite a flat, boring day. There's been no no strong light, but for this it's ideal because even taking a photograph in these conditions. The latitude of the centre isn't strong enough for this kind of photograph because there's, there's too much in there. So what I'm doing is taking those three or four different exposures will extend that latitude and then I can make an HDR photograph. But if it was even sunnier, then I'd have to take so many different photographs to get, because the light will be hitting off the white and it'd just be so burnt out and the contrast between the white and the dark will be so grey that I'll have to, I don't know how many photos I'll take but when I put those back into Lightroom and make an HDR image of them it just won't look right. I've had a lovely walk today it's um, the sun's coming and going it hasn't made its mind up but uh, I've been out for a few hours now and it's time to go for breakfast so I'm going to cut the video here. So I really do hope you've enjoyed watching this video and you've enjoyed some of the photos. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up 
and leave me a comment. I always love to read them and I'll see you next time.